Hayden Gardeners, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be planting some spring flowering bulbs, taking a look at what's popping up in the garden, and we're going to go over how our row covers held up for our big snowstorm. Um, so let's get into it. So a couple days ago, we got 20 centimeters of heavy snow, and I'll insert some clips to show you how our front yard really looked. And if you saw the uh, short with Marco, then you know, I mean, we, we had a real blizzard. Um, but everything's kind of melted now, so I'm going to be planting some stuff. I'm gonna put some carrot seeds down and really use the, the row cover for some of our spring crops. But I wanted to give you an update as to how it held up with all that weight of snow. We're also going to be potting up some of our spring flowering bulbs. Um, I already have some started in different areas from last year, but I have some that we picked up in the spring um, on liquidation, and that was also in a short. And so I got them for like $2 a package, which is great. And the one thing is that they needed to be potted up because they were drying out from, you know, not being planted when they're supposed to be planted in the fall. So um, I potted them up and I put them in the backyard on the uh, benches. And so now they're ready to go out where I can kind of see where there's, there's holes and stuff in the front yard and under the fruit trees. So we're going to be doing that. So, uh, let me show you the uh, cloth cover and we'll go from there. So as you can see, they actually did really, really well. They popped up, they stayed, nothing ripped, um, and the bungee is holding straight. So I just have to adjust it a little bit and it should be good to go. This side came up completely, so it's probably a little short for our purposes here, but pretty good, all things considered. So now we're ready to plant some of our spring stuff in our uh, hoop tunnel or our row cover, anything like that. Um, we're just gonna lift it up all along to get access. And what I have in mind is to plant some of our, our spring onions. So we have some, you know, just regular spring onions, part of a set. It was part of a, one of our bags, one of our early bags that we bought in the season. It's like $3 for 250 grams. So this is a portion of them. And we're just gonna put them along the row here. Eventually this is going to be peppers. Um, but for now, now that it's the, the springtime, I'm gonna put some of our uh, seeded lettuce that we started inside. I hardened off uh, the plants a little bit um, out on the balcony there uh, by taking it in and out for about a week and having a shade cloth over it. And I did the same thing with some kale. And those are gonna stay, kale's gonna stay a lot longer than the lettuce, lettuce probably into June. And uh, the onions will just provide some, some, uh, structure, you know, architectural like interest. Um, and it'll be really convenient to be able to get to, to it from the house pretty quickly. Um, and then I'm going to put some carrots. Um, so we're going to plant the peppers in the center and then we're gonna have the carrots um, under basically the pepper canopy. And then we'll have the onions a little bit farther out and then eventually what we'll have is by these patio stones, these, these pavers that go to the pond, we'll have uh, lettuce and things there. So let's get started and I'll show you how I plant our carrot seeds in our uh, no dig bed. And Decided to do a double row all along this side of the bed because on the other side we have grasses and peonies and things, so I didn't want to overcrowd the foliage on the other side. So 
So right now I just moved some of this mulch out of the way and I roughed up the soil that we have underneath our uh, row cover. And I'm going to be planting some rainbow mix car uh, carrots. The seeds are coated, so it's a little bit easier to see in this demonstration than for the rest of them. So what I'm gonna do is make some furrows here, right? Some trenches, not too close to the onions that we just planted. So maybe starting here, here, and here, a couple centimeters apart. And it's a bit old seed, so I'm gonna heavily apply it. And this section will just be rainbow carrots. We're just gonna plant them, you know, like this. Normally I wouldn't put it this deep, but I mean, or this uh, dense, but because it's older seed and coated, you know, it doesn't tend to germinate quite as well. And carrot seed is notorious for having a kind of 60-70% germination rate, so not great. And we're just gonna do this. And then we're just gonna pinch over the seeds just a little bit. Just like that. And now it's cold it's cool weather and it's um, kind of moist out it's is rainy so it's good we're not gonna put the um, we're not gonna put the mulch back until later until everything's kind of started to germinate but what I will do is mist it in so not water it in mist it. carrot seeds are very delicate and so you don't want them to go down too far into the soil so we just mist in these seeds and I think April showers will do the rest for us. Okay. So right now I'm just gonna go along the row and in between all these pots that I've put in the center, I'm going to plant different types of carrots. And then everywhere I have a pot where I intend to plant a pepper plant, I'm going to put a either kale or, or um, leaf lettuce. So I'll go through that. And then um, I'm also, along with the carrots, because carrots take a while to germinate, what I'm gonna do is throw in some radish seeds with in the same areas as the uh, carrots because they grow, you know, maybe 25 days or so, and um, the carrots will take about 55 days. So it'll, the radishes will loosen up the soil and allow the carrots to go a little bit deeper, and I'll get two crops out of the same row cover, which is perfect for our small yard. Um, I'm not going with cherry bell radishes. I do have them inside, but um, I'm going to be doing daikon, white ickle. Doesn't take very long, and it gets about the size of maybe like a baby carrot. And I like them for pickling. Um, I like the Vietnamese pickled radish. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the radish uh, carrot combination this year. Um, so enjoy. <laughs>
Now, as you can see, we've got some mixed leaf lettuces, some rocket, and some kales. And then in between, we have the carrots that we planted. And then we have on the outside the green onions. So we're just going to close this up and move on with the garden. So although the bulbs that we planted in February, or that I planted in February uh, in pots don't look like much right now, we're going to plant them where they're gonna come up and go with the other bulbs that are in the uh, different beds. So we're gonna start with the front yard. Now the front yard, I really try to stay with the greens and the purples, um, the cooler colors um, in the spring, so the whites and the cream white uh, cream yellows and things like that um, in the front and then as it goes into the fall I try to go for the warmer tones uh, the reds the burgundies stuff but still like the main colors are purple and green but in the back it's a free for all for all the colors and so that's what we're gonna keep in mind so in the front I already have purple sensation alliums that come up amongst our our ferns and so I kind of, I have, so let's go through a list of the plants that I have to work with today. So I have a tulip called Candela Festival. It's an orange and red striped tulip. It gets 40 centimeters tall and it's going to flower in April, May. So pretty soon. And I have six of them. We'll see how many actually, you know, survive. But I'm thinking those are going to go in the back under the fruit trees. And I think that's going to go really well with some of the other plants that are there, which are warmer, brighter colors. Then we have a double snowdrop, which is white and green, called Flore Pleno. It gets 10 centimeters tall, January to March, so very, very early season, which we're kind of missing out front here. The first thing to bloom out front here is um, primrose, and so that's gonna be pretty soon. So I'm, I'm excited to get some crocuses and some snowdrop in here. Um, so I'm gonna put them, uh, Maybe a couple here around the pond, a couple under the fruit tree, and a couple under the juniper because I want them to naturalize. Then we have a dwarf iris, Catherine's Gold. It's a pale yellow, so it's perfect for the front here, right around the pond. And they're going to go really well with the primrose and probably do well with any kind of the pale uh, colors that we have in the spring. It gets 15 centimeters tall and it's from February until April. Um, then we have the ornamental alliums that I'm going to be working with. So we have Nigrum, which is a white allium. It gets a little bit shorter than Purple Sensation at 70 centimeters. Purple Sensation is 90 centimeters. So I think it's going to go really well in the front here with the existing globe alliums that I have. And so that one is May, June, same time as Purple Sensation. And I have five of them to work with. Um, I think they're going to go in amongst the... Um, the ferns I have over here in front of the pond. And then I have another allium called Silver Spring, but I only have one bulb. They're very expensive and they came out new last year. And I got it on sale and it seems to be in good um, condition. It's 90 centimeters, so same size as the Purple Sensation, but it's June, July, so it's later flowering. And it has white and kind of a warm, it looks like a warm purple. And I think it's gonna go well with the drumstick alliums um, that come out in that time frame. So I think I'm gonna put it on the other side over here where I start to get some of the fall color. And I think it's gonna play nicely off of the um, Garnet Amaranth. And I'll put it right in front of our bird bath because it'll probably get around that size and it'll just kind of have this swaying um, airy feel around this bird bath. I think that's going to look really nice. And then I have my crocuses. So I have striped beauty crocus which is white purple and stripe and it has a bit of a yellow center and the blooms are not that big but they are pretty early 10 centimeters tall January to March. So that's going to be perfect for under the fruit trees because of the purple color. I think I'm gonna put a little bit in front of the pond here so that we have some interest right under our uh, picture window. And then we also have the um, Ard Skink. I can't, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'll put it on the screen. 
And that one's a uh, white crocus with a bright yellow center, 10 centimeters tall, February to March, so a little bit later than the Striped Beauty, but around that time. And that one's also going to be around the pond and the fruit trees. So um, let's get into it. I'm going to separate out the ones that I'm going to put in the back, and I'll take out the pug uh, when I'm in the back planting, and I'll do some in the front here for you. Okay, let's go. So a lot of them ended up just not good. So I, I really can't plant as much of the uh, Catherine's gold as I'd like. We did get quite a few that didn't do so well. The white uh, crocuses, I mean, they're not looking so hot either. So I'm trying to find the ones that did okay, but a lot of them didn't do so hot. Uh, anyway. So we're just going to stick with uh, with our other ones here, these striped ones, because they're doing just fine. You can separate them just like this. It's a columnar fruit tree and at the base here we don't have a lot of color. Um, I know that there's chives that are going to come up and there's going to be some uh, some other flowers but they're later in the season so I really wanted to put some spring interest by putting some of these uh, crocuses and what else was I going to put? Some of these tulips. lucky with some of the bulbs that we picked up at the uh, spring sale I mean it's what I expected it because when you purchase bulbs that are so out of season you're really taking your chances I'm really happy with what we actually did get in the ground and hopefully it's going to take and do really well for years to come um, otherwise I will be purchasing more fall planted spring bulbs uh, later on in the year but for now a few more flowers in the garden to help the pollinators is always a good thing. Um, so we didn't get as many of the tulips to survive. We got a few that kind of squish. Not so great. Anyway, that's not going to the compost. It's going to go in the garbage because we don't want to uh, perpetuate any kind of fungal uh, problems in our compost. We're going to put it in the garbage. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's it for this uh, episode guys. Um, thanks for coming in the garden and planting some spring bulbs and some uh, cold season seeds. And uh, yeah, I'm very impressed with how the hoop house handled 20 centimeters of snow. And it was heavy snow too, very wet snow. So um, I'm very happy with that. Anyway guys, if you like this channel and you like this content and you found me tolerable, <laughs> um, or you just like hanging out with Pug, uh, make sure to like and subscribe down below. I'd love to see you here every week and I love to hear your comments. So uh, without further ado guys, have fun in the garden. Bye. <laughs>